What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Fuel channel where we speak the truth, we're honest, and we give our takes on professional wrestling. It is Wednesday night, May 8th, 2024. This is your AEW Dynamite review right here on the Big Fight Fuel channel. And tonight, Dynamite took place uh, during in the Canada tour. Once again, and uh, tonight the show took place from Edmonton, Canada, uh, the home of the Edmonton Oilers. The crowd was very heavy on the Edmonton Oilers. In fact, there were a lot of Let's Go Oilers chants in the arena tonight ahead of tonight's game one, which is actually at the time I'm recording this, it's probably started already between the Edmonton Oilers and and the Vancouver Canucks. I think, at, uh, I don't know. I think Connor McDavid and the Oilers, they get past the second round once again and get to the conference finals in the Stanley Cup. But um, we're here to talk about Dynamite tonight. Pretty good show. I will admit, at some points, I was pretty bored watching this entire, not the entire show, but at parts of the show. I'm like, okay, I just want to move on to the next segment because I thought some of it was boring. I didn't really think the women's segments were all that great. However, I did like the backstage promo from Willow Nightingale talking about her match with Mercedes. And I liked Mercedes' backstage promo talking about her match with Willow. Um, I thought that was good. And then there was a couple things on there that was pretty boring in my honest opinion. But overall... Um, it was pretty good. It was pretty good for the most part. And uh, we got one of our big main events announced for Double or Nothing. Uh, Anarchy, Arena Anarchy in the Arena is taking place once again on May 26th. And uh, the Mogul Embassy has turned on Swerve, which I think is about time. I was actually um, pretty excited that it happened, and I'm glad it happened because um, at this stage as the world champion, babyface, Swerve does not need a faction. Let's just be real. So, we're going to talk about all of it here tonight on the channel. I thank you all so much for joining me. There was no review last week just because... I felt so tired that I couldn't even come on here and do a review. But uh, we're back tonight, and then that'll this will be this is it for the week. And then next week, next week is gonna be a little shaky. So let me talk about this for a little bit. Next week, we'll have episode four of Chopping It Up on Tuesday night. That's a no-brainer. Myself, Cameron Johnson, Escobar Morales. Chopping it up on Tuesday night. Here's where it gets tricky. Next Wednesday, it was announced yesterday that on May 15th, which is next Wednesday, the NFL schedule is going to be released. And I want to do an instant reaction video to when the Miami Dolphins schedule gets released next week. Because... That's a huge deal, and in my opinion, in the off in the off season, the four biggest events are free agency, the schedule release, the NFL draft, and then whatever camps and on camps, mini camps, rookie camps, all that comes last. The season starts when camp starts, so the end of July. Is when football season starts, in my opinion. But um, we're still in the off season. We got months before that. Anyway, point is, next Wednesday the NFL schedule is getting released, and next Wednesday is also Dynamite. Dynamite is on Wednesdays. I don't know how I'm gonna uh, go around this, but. I think I'm leaning towards making a Miami Dolphins video next Wednesday to talk about the schedule because it's a big deal. 
and there's some big time games on the Miami Dolphins schedule um, coming up this season. They're one of the more popular teams in the NFL just because of the players that they got on the team. Tua is very popular. Tyree Kill is one of, if not the most popular player in the NFL. They just signed Odell Beckham, who's very popular. Jalen Waddle is popular. Um, Mike McDaniel is a social media darling. So the Miami Dolphins are going to get a lot of big games, and I want to break it down for you on Wednesday night. So I'm thinking that next week we'll talk about Dynamite when we review. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll talk about Dynamite if we review Collision. That's what I'm thinking. And I'll let you guys know. But anyway, let's get into the show. Tonight, it opened up with Orange Cassidy versus Trent. Now, <laughs> last week, this storyline took an interesting turn. When Don Callis got himself involved and uh, he instructed Orange Cassidy to backstage. Don Callis was on commentary the entire night. Uh, Taz was not there for knee prob for knee problems, and uh, he was not on the show tonight. So Don Callis took his place, and uh, Don Callis was involved after the match. So that's what we're going to talk about. The match itself. It was fine. It was what it was. I thought Trent was going over so that the heel could pick up the win in the first match of the feud. The finish was Trent went to take off the exposed turnbuckle. When the ref was checking on Orange Cassidy, he came back to backfire against Trent. And Orange Cassidy slammed him into the turnbuckle. And Orange Cassidy rolled him up. Trent was very pissed off, and he attacked Orange Cassidy on the outside, and he had a toolbox, and he was about to hit Orange Cassidy with it, and Don Callis comes in. Don Callis comes in, he pulls away Orange Cassidy. I'm not believing this shit whatsoever. I think this is, we're getting fooled here. I actually think Don Callis is working with Trent. I think Trent is about to be... <laughs> In the Don Callis family. What's that going to do for Trent? I really don't know to be honest with you. But uh, that's, I guess that's where it seems like this is happening. It, the, what's happening here. Is. Don Callis is recruiting Trent. Into the Don Callis family. They're, gonna, they're about to lose. Will Ospreay. And uh, I think they lose Will Ospreay. And they gain Trent and the Don Cal's family. <laughs> Not an upgrade at all. But um, yeah, that's where this is going. Uh, Serena D came out. She had a story. She talked about she was out for 15 months. It was the most 15 months. Most frustrating 15 months of her life. She battled through three seizures to get back. And to get back at the top of the women's division, uh, she grinded every day to get back to AEW so that she could be on top of the women's division. <laughs> Tony Storm came out, did her spaz. Serena Deeb was saying, you know, you need to start giving a shit. And Tony Storm said in her, like, very 1970-ish voice, that I could not give a solitary shit about what your problems were when you were injured. So Serena Deeb took that personally and she punched Tony Storm in the face. The crowd didn't really care. Serena Deeb was cutting her promo and uh, um, the crowd started chanting, let's go Oilers, because they were, the, they were in Edmonton. Um, so that was the segment. Um, I guess they're trying to make Serena Deeb the babyface in this feud. I don't really know how. People absolutely love Tony Storm. 
I think it's going to be pretty hard to get people to boo Tony Storm, to be honest with you. So, um, this might be a scenario where they have Deeb as the babyface going into the pay-per-view. But in reality, she's going to be the heel because everyone's going to want Tony Storm to win. So, that's what's probably going on with this situation. And uh, we'll see what happens. Harley Cameron takes on uh, Mariah May. This match was not that good. Mariah May wins at about eight minutes. She gets beaten down by Soraya and Harley Cameron. Out came Mina Shirakawa for uh, n another week in a row, uh, helping out her friend Mariah May. And uh, they go for a kiss at the end. Mariah May goes for the kiss, and Mina pulls away. And Mariah May was pretty pretty upset. Um, there was a backstage interview with Pac. We haven't seen Pac since he lost to uh, uh, we haven't seen Pac since he lost to uh, Okada at Dynasty and this reporter, this new, I have no idea where Renee was. Where in the world was Renee? I mean, come on, man. Anyway, they have a new backstage reporter. I didn't get her name, um, but she asked Pac, are you trying to get back with the death triangle? I just thought that was a bad question. And then um, Bullet Club Gold came in, and it set up the scene for what was going to happen after Jay White's match. And it probably set up Bullet Club Gold's match at double or nothing, which I absolutely think is great. Sets up Bullet Club Gold taking on the Death Triangle. However, Ray Phoenix is once again injured. He literally just came back on collision, and now he's injured again, which absolutely sucks. Um, so we saw that. Um, Swerve. And Christian Cage. They had their back and forth. Um, Christian Cage buried the Edmonton Oilers. He absolutely buried the Oilers, saying the Canucks are gonna take their are gonna kick their ass tonight. Um, he talks about Swerve and how he shouldn't be at the top. He's at the top right now, but he's not going to be at the top for any longer because Christian Cage is going to take that spot away from him. And Swerve's talking how he politicked his way to the top. Meanwhile, I had to grind since day one. I couldn't get on pay-per-view cards. I had to work my way all the way up to the top. And now I'm here as the world champion. And uh, now... I plan on keeping it. And at this point, Christian was saying, I'm going to take everything from you, including those stupid grills in your teeth. So he said, I'm going to do that right now. And Swerve says, I didn't come alone. And out came Brian Cage and the Gates of Agni. And... As the camera is looking at Christian Cage, you could see in the background that Brian Cage attacked Swerve. And I kind of saw this coming, not just tonight, but for a couple months now, because Swerve is the biggest babyface in AEW. These guys are not baby faces. And Brian Cage was standing behind Swerve the entire time. And uh, they took him out. They powerbombed him through the announce table. Brian Cage <laughs> gave Swerve the Iron Claw. And I love this. I absolutely thought this segment was awesome. And you could see that huge evil grin on Christian Cage's face when he looks at the Gates of Agni and Brian Cage. Basically, the story is 
this is the weekend swerve before double or nothing. And he convinced the Mogul embassy that Swerve Strickland does not care about him and they should take him out. It worked easily in their favor. What Prince Nana is going to think about all of this should be very interesting. Whose side is Prince Nana on? That should be pretty interesting in itself as well. So we'll see that uh, play out in a couple weeks. Um, Jay White took on Rocky Romero. And uh, I didn't really care about this match. Didn't really care about it that much. And um, uh, Jay White won. And uh, Pac came out. And the three guys, uh, Jay White and uh, the guns, ran away from Pac. So there was that. Um, what was after this? Jericho and Big Bill. I gotta admit, man. I'm starting to like this Learning Tree Chris Jericho gimmick. He is trolling with this audience. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is overly positive. He is saying we are in the wrong city. He said we were in Calgary tonight instead of Edmonton. I, I, I like it. I'm telling you, man. I'm liking it. And Hook is coming back next week as well. So <laughs> we shall see what happens with the learning tree. Um, and then this TNT championship match. Adam Copeland. Versus Brody King. No disqualification. Brutal. Violent. Chaos. Exactly what it was. Tons of blood. Copeland makes uh, Brody King bleed when he takes uh, the leg of a steel chair and he smashes it over his head. That's when uh, Brody King started bleeding. Adam Copeland... I saw in the teaser with Chris Van Vliet for Van Vliet's new interview with him that he's got about a year and a half, two years left to go. And it's going to depend how his body feels. Man, don't take this guy for granted. He is nearly 50 years old. And he's going out there and he's putting on matches like this. No disqualification matches like this. Which is something he would never be allowed to do in the WWE. Nowadays, maybe. Maybe he could get away with it. But not three years ago when he was in the WWE. Or two years ago. When WWE was ran by a certain regime. Uh, this match was awesome. Brody King, there was no way he was going to win. And it set up a big match for Collision because uh, Brody King was about to beat up uh, Copeland before the match. After the match, Kyle O'Reilly came out for the save, and he mentioned to uh, Copeland that you know Collision is in my hometown of Vancouver this week. So they go from Edmonton to Vancouver. I would love to see Christian Cage change it up, and shit on the Canucks in favor of the Edmonton Oilers. That would be pretty funny. Um, but now, Kyle O'Reilly is getting a TNT Championship match in his hometown on Saturday night against Adam Copeland. Should be a great match. And then the closing segment. The Elite in the ring. They talk about Tony Khan. Last week, they beat up a uh, Kenny Omega who's still recovering from diverticulitis. And Kenny Omega confirmed later in the night, earlier in the night I should say, that um, he can't wrestle. He's not cleared yet. But he can resemble a team to represent AEW. And he's going to book his first match as an EVP, which is an anarchy in the arena at double or nothing. With the brand new elite. 
And the first two guys he chose was FTR, who came out uh, in assistance for Kenny Omega. Not necessarily saved Kenny Omega, because Kenny Omega was laying in the ER. Kenny Omega got V-triggered, or EVP-triggered, I'm sorry. Um, But they get two guys to be on Team AEW, and it's Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson. So you know that this version of the elite are such assholes and such pricks that you have Eddie Kingston and Brian Danielson deciding to come together to join forces for this match at Double or Nothing on May 26th. I love Anarchy in the Arena. I really do. It's one of my favorite matches of the entire year. So, the fact that we're getting it again at Double or Nothing, I'm very excited. The only thing that I'm not a a little upset about is we're not going to see the tag titles or the Continental Championship defended at the pay-per-view. But in in the positive realm, we are getting an awesome match with the Young Bucks, Okada, and Jack Perry versus uh, FTR, Eddie Kingston, and Brian Danielson. Would it be shocked if that match main events the pay-per-view again? Wouldn't be shocked at all. So that's everything. That's your Dynamite review. Best thing on the show tonight was probably the segment with uh, Swerve and him getting turned on by the Mogul Embassy. Really, so far, I'm enjoying the Christian Cage Swerve build for the two weeks that it has gotten. We got two more weeks before Double or Nothing. It is crazy how fast weekly television goes before these pay-per-views. King of the Ring backlash just happened four days ago, and King of the Ring is already in two weeks. Dynasty happened in late April, and now Double or Nothing is coming up in two weeks. It's crazy how fast weekly television goes to so we get to the pay-per-view. Insane. But I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to keep up with Twitter for some updates next Wednesday. I am 70% sure that... I will not be doing a Dynamite review next Wednesday. And instead, I will be doing a Miami Dolphins schedule reaction video. I'm 70% sure about that. Um, But follow me on Twitter for updates. Colin underscore Joseph. Uh, I'm 200 followers away until 3,000. Which I think is a big milestone. I do. 3,000 is a big number. So we are 200 followers away from 3,000 on the big, uh, not this channel, my Twitter page. Follow me on Twitter, Conlin underscore Joseph. Um, Comment down below your thoughts about tonight's Dynamite. Hit the like button if you like what you heard from me. And that's all I got. Have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy and love wrestling. I'm out. Peace.